No, Christina is on the list to do it. Rejoice, rejoice, believers, and let your lights appear. The evening is advancing and darker night is near. The bridegroom is arising and soon will draw nigh. Up watch in expectation, the Midnight comes the cry. See that your lamps are burning and replenish them with oil. Look now for your salvation, the end of sin and toil. The marriage feast is waiting and gates wide open. Rise up, ye heirs of glory, the bridegroom is at hand. Our hope and expectation, O oh Jesus, now appear. Arise, thou sun, no long for above this darkened sphere. With hearts and hands uplifted, lead, O oh Lord, to see the day of earth's redemption and ever be with thee. One day, one holy and living God. Glory, Glory to God
Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Grant to us, Lord, we pray, the spirit to think and do always those things that are right, that we who cannot exist without you may, be, may by you be enabled to live according to your will. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray over our children. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. You have blessed us with the joy and care of children. May the knowledge of you dawn on them. May the love grow in them. And may the grace of your spirit draw them to you. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The vision of Isaiah, son of Amos, which he saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem in the days of Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, kings of Judah, Hear the word of the Lord, you rulers of Sodom. Listen to the teachings of our God, you people of Gomorrah. What to me is the multitude of your sacrifices, says the Lord? I have had enough of burnt offerings of rams and the fat of fed beasts. I do not delight in the blood of bulls or of lambs or of goats. When you come to appear before me, you ask this, who asks this from your hand? Trample my courts no more, bringing offerings as futile. Incense is an abomination to me. New moon and Sabbath and calling of convocation, I cannot endure solemn assemblies with iniquity. Your new moons and your appointed festivals my soul hates. They have become a burden to me. I am weary of bearing them. When you stretch out your hands, I will hide my eyes from you. Even though you make many prayers, I will not listen. Your hands are full of blood. Wash yourselves. Make yourselves clean. Remove the evil of your doings from before my eyes. Cease to do evil. Learn to do good. Seek justice. Rescue the oppressed. Defend the orphan. Plead for the widow. Come now. Let us argue it out, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be like snow. Though they are red like crimson, they shall become like wool. If you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. But if you refuse and rebel, you shall be devoured by the sword, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. The word of the Lord. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 50. The psalm is read responsively with the congregation reading the bolded verses. The Lord, the God of gods, has spoken. Out of Zion, perfect is its beauty. Our God will come and will not keep silence. He calls the heavens and the earth from above. Gather before me, my loyal followers. Let the heavens declare the rightness of his cause. Hear, O my people, and I will speak. O Israel, I will bear witness against you. I do not accuse you because of your sacrifices. Consider this well, you who forget God. Whoever offers me the sacrifice of thanksgiving honors me. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Hebrews. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, 
the convictions of things not seen. Indeed, by faith, our ancestors received approval. By faith, we understand that the worlds were prepared by the word of God, so that what is seen was made from things that are not visible. By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to set out for a place that he was to receive as an inheritance, and he set out, not knowing where he was going. By faith, he st- He stayed for a time in the land he had been promised, as in a foreign land, living in tents, as did Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked forward to the city that has foundations, whose architect architect and builder is God. By faith he received power of procreation, even though he was too old, and Sarah herself was barren because he considered him faithful who had promised. Therefore, from one person, and this is one as good as dead, descendants were born, as many as the stars of heaven and as the innumerable grains of sand by the seashore. All of these died in faith without having received the promises, but from a distance they saw and greeted them. They confessed that they were strangers and foreigners on the earth, for people who speak in this way make it clear that they are seeking a homeland. If they had been thinking of the land that they had left behind, they would have had opportunity to return. But as it is, they desire a better country, that is, a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God. Indeed, he has prepared a city for them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not be afraid, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions and give alms. Make purses for yourself that do not wear out, an unfailing treasure in heaven where no thief comes near and no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Be dressed for action and have your lamps lit. Be like those who are waiting for their master to return from the wedding banquet, so that they may open the door for him as soon as he comes and knocks. Blessed are those slaves whom the master finds alert when he comes. Truly I tell you, He will fasten his belt and have them sit down to eat, and he will come and serve them. If he comes during the middle of the night or near dawn and finds them so, blessed are those slaves. But know this, if the owner of the house had known at what hour the thief was coming, he would not have let his house be broken into. You also must be ready. For the Son of Man is coming at an unexpected hour. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Alleluia. Let us pray. Open our ears, O Lord, to hear your word and know your voice. Speak to our hearts and strengthen our wills, that we may serve you today, now, and always. Amen. Amen. 
Please be seated. It's a delight to be here with you again this morning. So I grew up here in Laverne, moving here when I was three years old, and didn't leave until I was the ripe old age of 19. Throughout my childhood, Laverne was considerably smaller than it is today and was full of housing developments and orange groves. Not much retail existed then, just what is now referred to as Old Town Laverne. Some summer evenings were spent playing at each other's houses or out in our street, which was thankfully a cul-de-sac. We played until the street lights came on and then we knew it was time to head home. I remember one time though, when I was about six or seven, when those street lights came on and mom treated my sister Doreen and I to an ice cream and allowed us to sit on the curb eating our ice cream, watching the stars come out. It was the first time I remember becoming aware that there were far too many stars in the sky to count. And I remember being amazed at God's handiwork. Later that summer, we took our yearly vacation. Now we were a family of six children with modest means, so our vacations were always to go camping somewhere. This particular year, we traveled to the mountains. I can't remember where exactly, but it was pretty remote. At night, after the campfire had died down, you could look up into the night sky and see it without any of the light pollution of the city or our own streetlights. I was awed at the sight of the multitude of stars that I could now see. I was overwhelmed with a feeling I couldn't describe then, but now know it was a feeling of being frightened at my own inadequacy and how insignificant I was in God's creation. I was completely overwhelmed at the expanse of the sky and realized there was more to this universe than I could ever comprehend or even see on my own. This brings me to our reading from Paul's letter to the Hebrews. I think Abraham was feeling his own sense of inadequacy, much the same as you and I might when we realize that what we are hoping for doesn't seem to be happening. As Abraham stood there, things opened up for him with the assistance of God. Abraham ground, grounded in hope and yet standing in scarcity was given a divine revelation beyond human understanding. Like a young child suddenly made aware of the vastness of space, Abraham's hope became conviction. As Romans chapter four, verse three says, and Abraham believed the Lord and the Lord reckoned it to him as righteousness. Faith is born of God's unconditional love and our human desire to respond to that love. It is the push and the pull between hope and certainty. In Hebrews, we hear familiar examples of the faith of Abraham. Under, understanding the letter to the Hebrews means we have to put ourselves in the context of what it was like living as a Hebrew Christian in a Greco-Roman world. The word faith in the Greek language is pisti. In Greek mythology, pistis was the one pure and good spirit held in Pandora's box, who once released, fled the earth, and escaped back to the heavens. So faith was no longer on earth. Imagine, in that cultural context surrounding the early church, what it meant to have faith and to hold the Christian belief that God has become human in Jesus Christ. 
incarnate God made human to live on earth. Heaven had come to reside with us, returning faith to be here with us. The author of Hebrews sees and names the countercultural conviction that this incarnate love of God is the basis of our faith. In Christ, embodiment of God resides faith. This faith is not only known in heaven, but also here on earth. Like the Webb telescope, the amplified understanding of faith expands our vision and helps us see further into the gospel lesson. Do not be afraid, little flock, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions and give alms. Make purses for yourself that do not wear out an unfailing treasure in heaven where no thief comes near and no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. If heavenly faith has come to live with us here, why would we even need to worry about hoarding those limited resources? God has come to live with us, and in that relationship, we find faith. Faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. The author Howard Thurman died in 1981, and he was known as a theologian, a mystic, and a civil, civil rights activist. In his book, Deep is the Hunger, he reflected on the nature of this kind of transforming, convicting faith in the way that we live our daily lives in this relationship with God. In his book, he wrote, the human spirit has no fundamental demands that must be met relative to God. First, God must be vast. I'm sorry, let me read that again. The human spirit has two fundamental demands that must be met relative to God. First, God must be vast, limitless, limitless, transcendent, all comprehensive, so that there is no thing that is outside the wide reaches of God's apprehension. The stars in the universe, the great galaxies of spatial groupings, moving in unendless rhythmic patterns in the trackless sky, as well as the tiny blades of grass by the roadside, all are within God's grasp. The second demand is that God be personal, and intimate. All of us want the assurance of not being deserted by life, nor deserted in life. Faith teaches us that God is, that God is the fact of life from which all other things takes their meaning and reality. So those were the words of Howard Thurman. And let me repeat what he said. Faith teaches us that God is that God is the fact of life from which all other things take their meaning and reality. So for those of you whom all this talk of far off stars and heavenly treasures still seems a bit too murky, let me offer you an example of God's vastness and our connectedness. At St. Timothy's Church in Apple Valley, where I became an Episcopalian, we had a laundry love ministry. Now I know some of you are very familiar with laundry love, but those of you who don't know about this vital ministry, it provides a means of having clean clothes for anyone in need. I was volunteering one night and a young woman, a mother with two toddlers, came in with several baskets of laundry to be washed. She told us that she was recently single and how hard it was for her to make ends meet while being able to afford childcare when she worked. She was scared and worried that she would not be able to have enough to feed her children, let alone give them clean clothes to wear. I sat with her along with another volunteer who happened to be a social worker. 
and we provided her with some resources that might be able to help her. A week later, I was grocery shopping and saw this young woman with another volunteer who was known for being a bargain shopper. She was teaching this woman how to stretch her shopping dollars. Here was this woman who a week earlier had been scared and didn't know where to turn for help, who was now being held and loved and known in the middle of a constellation of grace and connection. I saw a renewed conviction and faith in her expression. She told me she was confident that she would be able to pro properly provide for her children, and she knew that she had support. Meeting her in the grocery store expanded my vision and renewed my own conviction. God is present in all these great and small actions of our lives. God brings, God longs for the invitation to help us see God in each other, just as much as we long to know God. Faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. The meaning of the word gospel is good news. And the good news for us today is that we, all of us here, are part of both the vastness and the presence of God in this world. When we feel alone, discouraged, or overwhelmed by what we can see of the world around us, we can be assured of God's presence with us and how God's vision surpasses our own. When we see God's vision and we are inspired to act out of the conviction of our faith, our efforts are never for naught. We might not see the fruits of our efforts, but our conviction, our connections with each other are vast, as vast as the expanse of the stars. We might not see these connections, but God sees them, works with them and us to rebuild this fragmented world to a wholeness of God's vision. When we are fortunate, we, ca we catch sight of this one person, one shining star at a time. We can see God in those connections we have made with each other, appearing like constellations at night. It is then that we are supported by our faith, that we are a part of a much larger picture, even if we can't see it yet. This is righteousness. We come to know this in the faith that lives in our hearts, and when we realize this, we can open our eyes to all of God's vision and do the work that God has called us to do. Faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Amen. by reciting the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is.
Do not be afraid, children of Abraham. God, your God, is your shield. So let us approach our God, saying, Let your loving kindness, O Lord, be upon us. We put our trust in you. As your church, we confess that we are strangers seeking a homeland. Do not be ashamed to call yourself our God and make us worthy of that heavenly city you have prepared for us. Let your loving kindness, O God, be upon us. Mighty God, you behold all of the people in the world. May all tribes and nations come to understand that our strength is not found in violence or weapons, but in the power of your love. Let your loving kindness, O Lord, be upon us. Creator God, you are the one who made the stars of heaven and the sand by the seashore. We bless and honor you for the gifts of creation. Let your loving kindness, O Lord, be upon us. Defend the orphans, O God. Rescue the oppressed. Show compassion to those who feel lonely or isolated. And let the heavens declare the, right, the rightness of your cause. Let your loving kindness, O Lord, be upon us. Comfort and heal the sick and the sorrowful. May they know that you are their help and shield. Deliver them from all fear and help them to trust in your righteousness. Let your loving kindness, O Lord, be upon us. Indeed, by faith, our ancestors received approval. We praise you, God, that those who have died are welcomed home, where they dwell with all men and women of faith in the city you have prepared for them. Let your loving kindness, O Lord, be upon us. Let us pray for those on our St. John's community prayer list. Joe, Jimmy, Beth, Lorraine, T, Gary, Damo, Alva, Bill, Michelle, Stephen, Larry, Chuck, Chris, Darlene, Walt, Marilyn, and Luke Ensberg and family. A prayer for peace in light of the Russian invasion of Ukraine. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, guide the nations of the world into the way of justice and truth, and establish among them the peace which is the fruit of righteousness, that they may become the kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Almighty God, to whom our needs are known before we ask, Help us to ask only what accords with your will. And those good things which we dare not, or in our blindness cannot ask, grant us for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that he has sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done. Almighty God, have mercy. Forgive you all your sins to our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. The peace of Christ be always with you. Yeah, I just turned it off.
Oh, that turned off. Are you turning off and on or off or mute? I'm, t oh, I'm turning off and off there. Hello, hello. Well, I don't think we have any announcements today, unless we're not sure of any announcements. So do we have any birthdays or anniversaries? Ah, there's two of you, so it must be an anniversary. Oh, is this a birthday? No? OK. And I forget, what do you do with that? You do what? Oh, okay. Let us turn to page 431 in our Book of Common Prayer. And we have, I forgot your name, sorry. Ted and Sharon. Ted and Sharon, and this is an anniversary yeah. since you're both here? Okay. How many years are we celebrating? 41. <laughs> All right. Let us pray. O oh God, you have so consecrated the covenant of marriage that in it is represented the spiritual unity between Christ and his church. Send therefore your blessing upon these your servants that they may so love, honor, and cherish each other in faithfulness and patience, in wisdom and true godliness, that their home may be a haven of blessing and peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Bless you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And Stephen, what are we praying for today? Uh, we're praying for uh, safe travel for my son, Luke, and his wife, Zephyr, and their two children. They're in Jerusalem right now. Okay. Well, uh, I guess there's a conflict happening. And I also yes. want to be thankful that I had test results that came out. Good. Yay. All right. Well, first, let's pray for our travelers, Luke and his wife, Vesela. Okay. Oh, God, our Heavenly Father, whose glory fills the whole creation and whose presence we find wherever we go, preserve those who travel, Luke and Vesela. Surround them with your loving care, protecting them from every danger and bring them in safety to their journey's end. Through Christ our Lord, amen. amen. Almighty God, we give you thanks for positive news in Stephen's family, whether it be for himself or someone else. We thank you for all of the gifts that you have given of medical treatment and options available. We know that it is you behind all of these gifts that have been given to us, and for that we thank you. We ask that you bring us all to wholeness and feel your loving arms surrounding us always, letting us know that we are never alone on this journey. And these things we say through Christ our Lord and Savior. Amen. Bless you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You're welcome. Yours, our Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the victory, and the majesty. For everything in heaven and on earth is yours. Yours, O Lord, is the kingdom, and you are exalted as head over all. Trail is 
beside still waters, the road where faith is found. Bless so journeys and pilgrims on its way. Hope burns throughout the terrors. Love finds the day. Yearn for holy freedom. Often we are bound. Together we are seeking the road where faith is found. Divine, eternal lover, you meet us on the road. Wait for land of promise where milk and honey. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Oh yeah, I forgot about this part. <laughs> Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly hosts. Praise So please excuse me, my day job, we don't have an offertory, so I'm not used to doing that. So please pardon me. And let us begin this again. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and a good and joyful to give you thanks, all holy God, source of life and fountain of mercy. You have filled us in all creation with your blessing and fed us with your constant love. You have redeemed us in Jesus Christ and knit us into one body. Through your spirit, you replenish us and call us to fullness of life. Therefore, joining with angels and archangels and with the faithful of every generation, we lift our voices with all creation as we sing. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest, blessed is he who comes. Blessed are you, gracious God, creator of the universe and giver of life. You formed us in your own image and called us to dwell in your infinite love. You gave the world into our care that we might be your faithful stewards and show forth your bountiful grace. But we failed to honor your image in one another and in ourselves. We would not see your goodness in the world around us. And so we violated your creation abused one another and rejected your love. Yet you never ceased to care for us and prepared the way of salvation for all people. Through Abraham and Sarah, you called us into covenant with you. 
You delivered us from slavery, sustained us in the wilderness, and raised up prophets to renew your promise of salvation. Then, in the fullness of time, you sent your eternal word, made mortal flesh in Jesus. Born into the human family and dwelling among us, he revealed your glory. Giving himself freely to death on the cross, he triumphed over evil, opening the way of freedom and life. On the night before he died for us, our Savior Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. As supper was ending, Jesus took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my, is, this is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Remembering his death and resurrection, we now present to you from your creation this bread and this wine. By your Holy Spirit, may they, be, may they be for us the body and blood of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Grant that we who share these gifts may be filled with the Holy Spirit and live as Christ's body in the world. Bring us into the everlasting heritage of your daughters and sons, that with all your saints, past, present, and yet to come, we may praise your name forever. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, to you be honor, glory, and praise forever and ever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and give us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. The mind, the kingdom, the power, and the name. Amen. 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 This is the banquet of the Lamb. It is made ready for those who love him and for those who want to love him more. So come, you who have much faith and you who have little, you who have been here often and you who have not been here long, you who have tried to follow and you who have failed. Come, because it is the Lord who invites you. It is the Lamb's will that you should meet God here.
This is the hour of banquet and of song. This is the heavenly table spread for me. Here let me feast and feasting still prolong the brief bright hour of fellowship with thee. Too soon we rise, we go our several ways. The feast, though not the love, is past and gone. The bread and wine consumed, yet all our days thou still art here with us, our shield and sun. Feast after feast thus comes and passes by, yet passing points to the glad feast above. Bring us foretaste of the festal joy, the Lamb's great marriage feast of bliss and Let us pray. Loving God, we give you thanks for restoring us in your image and nourishing us with spiritual food in the sacrament of Christ's body and blood. So send us forth from people, forgiven, healed, renewed, that we may proclaim your love to the world and continue in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. Go out into the world in peace. Be of good courage. Hold to what is good. Return no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Keep, help the suffering. Honor all people. Love and serve our God. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you forever. Lead us, O Father, in the paths of peace, without thy guiding, and we go astray, and doubts of Shallows of a darksome night. 
through Christ the true and living way. Lead us, O oh Father, to thy heavenly rest. However rough and steep thy path may be, through joy or sorrows thou Go forth to love and serve God and God's world. Amen. Go in the name of the one who breathes life.